Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson, and I am the CEO of Miami's Action Coach business coaching firm, Team Sage, and your host of Business Spotlight South Florida, where we interview business owners that make South Florida great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Paul Quinville of GT Global Services. They are leaders in managed services and IT solutions. Welcome, Paul. Can you give us a brief description of your business and what makes it unique in the managed services and IT solution space? Uh, thank you uh, for the intro, Jody. Um, GT has been around for about 18 years. And we operate in uh, Canada and the U.S. Uh, and we have a, a large uh, mix of customers in terms of uh, size. So on the managed services side, typically those customers are smaller customers, um, usually under 100 employees. Our larger customers tend to be, uh, you know, in the thousands of employees and look to us uh, to augment uh, their staffing and uh, other initiatives that they have. So for it's a example- wide range. Yeah, so for example, our one of our largest customers is Ryder, uh, who's based in Miami, of course. Is Ryder yeah. in Miami, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah, so- uh, for them, we do a lot of uh, technology deployment. That means just rolling trucks out to 800 locations across uh, the U.S. and Canada, including Hawaii and Puerto Rico. So we, we have uh, quite an expansive uh, footprint, uh, and that helps us uh, differentiate ourselves between other managed service providers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I grew up here in Miami, and Ryder has been since I was a child. Yeah. They've been around a really long time, big, big company. That's right. right. And what drove you to start your business in the first place, Paul? Well, I had a um, prior to starting this business, worked in the um, IT uh, sort of industry. And right out of uh, college, I started my own cell phone store. And uh, I really hated retail, I, I got to tell you. You know, no offense to people that work in retail, but. I kind of got bored with that. And while I had my store, I, uh, and this is, you know, many years ago, I would, you know, cold call larger businesses and, and make sales in a B2B uh, method, as opposed to waiting for people coming through the door, which I really enjoyed. So I thought, you know, I'm going to get out of retail and just focus on, on that. And I'd worked for um, some other companies along the way. But uh, about 18 years ago, I started GT and took it from there. What had you started, though? I'm sorry? What was the leap that had you say, oh, I'm going to go start my own business? Well, I had, a, at the time, 18 years ago, when I started, I previous to that, I was working for a large telecom carrier um, and got laid off, even though, you know, my, my number was huge, but big companies tend to do that. Yep. Um, I was Especially if your numbers are huge. Yeah, I mean, I was I was the second highest quota attainment um, in sales for that large telco, and uh, so when I left, that same telco had a, an agency program. So basically, you would go out and sell. They pay you a commission. You weren't an employee, but you were, you know, representing them. And then um, I wasn't the only one that that got laid off. There was about you know hundreds of people. Yeah. Uh, so I, I took about 30 of those folks uh, along with me and I started my own company acting as an agent uh, and then uh, got to keep a lot of my same customers. And those were mainly enterprise size customers, uh -huh. uh, rider mm -hmm. included, actually. Uh -huh. um, so that's that's kind of how I, I sort of, you know, uh, got into this business. And then. They changed my deal. You know, it's like sleeping with the elephant, that saying, you know, as soon as they make a change, then it affects me. And it's hard to build a business when you don't have that uh, contractual certainty in terms of who your customers are going to be. So they decide, well, you're not going to be able to service these large customers anymore. You got to focus on small ones. And I said, no, thank you. And then I uh, started this iteration of GT, which competes against the large telcos. Good for you. It says a lot about you and the relationship you had with Ryder that they stayed with you when you left. So well done. 
Thank you. Simon Sinek says people don't care what you do or how you do what you do. They care why you do what you do. So why do you do what you do? Well, uh, you know, again, I have a great passion for this industry and uh, I love the change. I love the innovation. Uh, I, I love beating out the competition. You know, <laughs> like I said, when I left that large taco, I was very motivated to do things better than they did. And uh, as a smaller company, it's it's actually quite easy to do that because these larger companies tend to not uh, pay attention to their customers as closely as, as we would. Um, and then we forge many relationships, um, you know, with our, our larger customers, uh, our core customers, I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's sort of how we took the approach. Good for you. We have a passion for the industry. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So given your business model, were there any challenges or opportunities that opened up for you during the pandemic? Well, the pandemic was quite good for us, actually. Um, you know, we, we uh, were able to um, help a lot of our customers transition from, you know, working in the office to working at home. Uh, also, because we had customers like Ryder, we had many customers in that industry where they're, uh, you know, the lo logistics, warehousing, transportation, that industry took off as you can imagine, you know, uh, customers like Amazon and, and places like that, uh, people were ordering more stuff to home and, and whatnot. So our customers did well and so did we. What capabilities did you all have to develop? Uh, it was more, uh, around security uh you know working from home there's big security concerns um equipment anything from you know uh internet we would provide uh to homes and the access methods and the equipment to the headsets it was really hard to get headsets <laughs> um you know stuff like that but uh you know, uh, anything a large enterprise would need or or any customer for that matter, uh, they usually come to us. So we we sell a mix of services and hardware. So and again, because we had that reach, we could go anywhere in Canada and the U.S. and deploy uh, pretty much any technology. Remotely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. OK, that's very interesting. What would you say is the biggest business challenge for you all in the next two to three years? I think uh, staffing is actually a challenge, uh, although, you know, be, it's become easier recently. Um, there's a lot of layoffs happening in the tech sector, mm -hmm. but I, I think mainly that's attributed to uh, people hiring too many people during COVID uh, in the pandemic. Um, so I think a lot of companies are right sizing, but in terms of talent, it's always finding um uh, great talent. I'm very involved in that. Um, but uh, aside from that, the uh, technology adaptation, um, training is a big one, getting our folks trained because, again, our customers rely on us because they expect us to know more than they do. <laughs> um, so that's always a challenge. You know, a um, number of my clients are evaluating different uh, softwares to you know, to help them in the management of their businesses. Do you all do any of that kind of work as well? Yeah, absolutely. We act as a, as an advisor um, in many cases when our customer come come to us with a challenge. We look at the business problem and then throw technology the the right technology at it. Not uh, so uh, we have a, a lab we internally that we work from, and we have great folks that work in that lab. And in the lab, we test out various technologies internally before we go out and recommend it to a customer. Well, that's actually something probably pretty special. Is that common in your industry or is that it's, something unique? It's actually not. Um, you know, my my competition, especially the larger ones, don't really do that. They, they wait for the customer to tell them what they want, uh, especially in the larger enterprise customers, they will come to you and say, well, I want this or that. Uh, but our job is is to, you know, make sure they're, they're buying the right technology. And that's why we invest the time and money into a, a lab so we can uh, understand what we're selling 
and actually use it and have implemented it. That's a fantastic innovation, right? Yeah. Something that sets you apart. We put that in the video on your LinkedIn and on your website. Yeah. No, I'm not kidding because, you know, like for instance, even in my small business, right? If my partner says, oh, I want to put in this new piece of software, I start crying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, please, because it's so disruptive. And then the learning curve and, you know, how long it takes to implement and even just muscle memory, Paul. I mean, just how I used to do something, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that that your cap capability of, of really testing out whether or not this is going to meet the need of that customer is a pretty big deal, actually. It's a big advantage big benefit yeah i mean you know it all goes to downtime and the uh disruption as you put it um implementing something new uh you don't want to implement it and, and find out later that hey this is not working for me uh and you have your customer come come back to you and say well why did you recommend this right. and you didn't tell me you know what the impact was going to be on my business and the operational impact right yeah so uh, our core customers have been around for over a decade. So that's an testament to, you know, making sure we do the right things and recommend the right things. All right. So how many people work for you? Uh, we're not a super huge company, uh, only because we um, have a lot of contract employees. But in batch employees, we have about 35. But contract employees that, that we use um, are in the thousands. Okay, so great. A good mix. And then I saw on your website that you have partnerships with, like, I think you said 350 different providers. So you're look, you're and you're not married to any one of them, right? So that's that's another great. You know, when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's really good because a lot yeah. of times people try to pigeonhole their customer into an existing relationship that they have. But yeah. you had said agnostic. You know? Exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, we're we're vendor agnostic. So again, if you're acting as an advisor, you, you really have to be work, coming from a, a position where you are truly vendor agnostic and you're giving, you know, the 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 best solution. And the other measurement that we use is, you know, how much can we save our customers um, by doing these these things? So we, we also advise on, on not just is it going to work, but does it make economic sense? Um, and so typically we, you know, we try and save our customers money, um, depending on what we're proposing. But Tell me about the smallest kind of company. What's it? What are they? I know what the big company looks like because writer is very clear in my mind and probably mm -hmm. is for most of the people who are going to watch and listen to this if they're in South Florida. But what about the smaller ones? What do they look like? Uh, so the smaller ones, again, you know, typically under 100 uh, employees, and and it also depends. Our focus really is not necessarily on the number of employees alone, but how many workstations do they use? So if we have a customer who's a manufacturer, they might have hundreds of employees, but maybe only a quarter of those folks ever touch a computing device. Um, so we have that, or we have... Uh, you know, law firms, uh, a lot of professional service firms as customers to um, really value a good partner because, again, they can't afford downtime, um, especially if they're uh, an accountant or a law firm because they're relying uh, or their customers are relying on them to be responsive and up. And uh, we had one one of them before they came to us, they lost all their data. So we uh, were able to take the uh computing devices and recover a lot of the data for them but um but yeah a lot of them a lot of the smaller customers uh it's 100 percent outsourced so anything it related they come to us uh for those uh solutions very clear so what's inspiring you most about your business these days well, I mean, our growth uh, is quite good. I mean, we just signed uh, McDonald's, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is a great one. Little thing, um, <laughs> little thing, Paul. <laughs> yeah, but I gotta stay away from there. I can't. I can't eat there. I, I'm trying. To <laughs> uh, but I'm glad they're a customer, and uh, so we're helping um, 
with their Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is a big thing in McDonald's. Like if their Wi-Fi goes down, all hell breaks loose. So they came to us because of our responsiveness and our reach. So again, thousands of uh, folks across Canada and the U United States, uh, and we could deploy those folks uh, within hours to go mm -hmm. with a, a nice. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Do you find the business climate to be very different in Canada than in the U.S.? Um, it's very similar. Uh, Canada, the tend to make decisions a lot slower than than in the U.S. Um, you know, so I kind of like the the U.S. customers uh, uh, because they they're very quick to uh, if they see something wrong to fix it. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, so it's very we, similar markets. Okay. So as we wrap up the interview, are there any kind of parting thoughts you want to share? Uh, I, I'm just glad to be part of your your interview and get uh, you know to know you and uh, your audience in terms of being an entrepreneur. And uh, I think it's very important for entrepreneurs to share their stories. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm very open to hearing other stories from other entrepreneurs because as a group we need to stick together and <laughs> and help each other so it's uh it's great and uh you know the uh, one saying i i always like this saying you know uh, if you're in the if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room so you got to keep your mind open uh and, and learn from other other folks that's beautifully said yeah very great you know i um I sometimes laugh because people say, oh, you own your own business. That means you go to the beach whenever you want. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, not so much. <laughs> yeah. So it takes a very uh, special and courageous person to be a business owner. So I acknowledge you for that. Thank you so much for your time today, Paul, and the difference that you're making, you know, both for your customers and for our community. And you can learn more about DT Global Services at gtglobal.ca. That's Business Spotlight South Florida, where we're interviewing business owners that make South Florida great. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, Jody. Take care.